Well, hello, Crossroads family uh, and friends. My name is Paul Delmage, and I'm one of the pastors here on staff here at Crossroads. I oversee the worship department, and I must say how exciting it is as our building is, is beginning to reopen again, uh, giving us this opportunity to, to worship together. Uh, listen, I know I've missed you all, and I know you miss each other, uh, but just make sure that you, you, you register for one of our upcoming services so that we can be together and worship our God together. Amen. We're going to have a great time. So we're going to jump right into our continued study of the Gospels. Now, there are two passages that, that we're going to glean from that talk about two individuals who had uh, individual encounters with Jesus. They sought out Jesus. They were seekers of the truth and they sought out Jesus and they had an answer they had an experience, an encounter that changed their lives forever. John 3 talks about the con conversation between Jesus and a man by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a teacher. He was a Pharisee. Uh, he was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was a group of religious leaders and scholars who pretty much handled everything pertaining to Jewish law and religion. He was a well-educated man. He was, uh, he was highly privileged, he was well-respected, uh, and, 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 and he was just very inspirational and influential throughout the land. And we read in John chapter 3 uh, about this account. I'm just going to take, take it straight from the scripture. It says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. You know, Nicodemus, at the very least, I, I want to give you some background where this is concerned. The Pharisees had a lot of hostility towards Jesus. Uh, they didn't like what he was about. You know, he was a breath of fresh air for the people. Um, he spoke uh, in ways that captivated people. He did miracles, he did signs and wonders. And to be truthful, you know, they thought that their, their leadership was, was, was being threatened. Um, and, and rightfully so, because Jesus called them out on a lot of things that, that they were doing that were wrong. So this is basically the situation that's happening. And one of the Pharisees, Nicodemus, seeks out Jesus at night. And he wants to, uh, to get to know who Jesus is. So here he is and he talks to him and he, and he gives a statement. Um, and, and to be truthful, at the very least, he was different from most of these Pharisees in that he actually acknowledged Jesus' authority and his divine wisdom from the very start. Now, he may not have been like an outright believer, full-fledged follower of Jesus Christ at that time, but he couldn't argue against what he had seen and what he, what he has heard. Jesus had done miracles that no one has ever seen or ever done. So this is him reaching out to Jesus. This is him trying to find out more about who Jesus was. Nicodemus, you know, even though he did see these miracles, he was still uncertain about, he was still uncertain about Jesus. So that's why he sought him out. And he had the question, I'm sure he had this question, was it possible that Jesus might be greater than any other prophet that had ever, that the world had ever seen? And this is how Jesus answered him. Verse three, Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was a gifted religious leader. He knew that he was gifted, but he also knew that he was spiritual, uh, blind to spiritual truths. So Jesus said a person must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Very confused. Uh, uh, as a person who's looking into the natural, very confused, you know, he knows that it's impossible for a person to be born again physically. Uh, and, and guess what? He's right. It's true. No one can be born or reborn physically. But Jesus was talking in a spiritual sense. 
Jesus was talking spiritually, saying, you have to be reborn spiritually. And um, the miracle, I mean, this is what it is. It is impossible for a person to be reborn physically, but Jesus was talking about that spiritual rebirth, the miracle that happens when God's spirit puts new life into dead hearts. And that's what it is. Here's a seeker looking for answers, and he comes into contact with Jesus, has an encounter, and his life is changed forever. The other passage is found in Luke chapter 19, which tells the story of Jesus and a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus was a tax collector of the city of Jericho. And it doesn't matter what time period you are, you are in. Being a, a tax collector is, is very, it, it's, it's just not a popular profession, put it at that. But in first century, first century Jewish culture, it goes a little deeper. They were very much disliked. Um, to the point where they were called uh, traitors to their own nation. But that's one thing about Zacchaeus. Another, another point about who he was, which is very important to know in the story, was that the Bible says he was short in stature. He was a short guy. And um, it's very important to, to this verse. And what we're going to do is we're just going to read from Luke chapter 19. It's a very short passage. Uh, and we're just going to start from verse 1. <clears throat> And he, Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich, <clears throat> and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, this is the crowd, they all grumbled. He has gone into to be with uh, be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And at that point, I just wanted to definitely stop right there and say, yeah, you know, these, this crowd was upset because uh, all the people that are following him, all of the people that are, have been faithful to him uh, are crowding Jesus. And they're upset now because he wants to go and hang out with this sinner, this man who's cheated the people time and time again. There's no doubt. Everybody knows who he is because they've been taking uh, taxes, taking money from them. So they know who he is. He, he's a cheater. He's a, he's a sinner. <laughs> uh, but Jesus, it's almost like he knew what was going to happen. He planned this. Uh, he wanted to hang out with the sinners. Jesus came for the sinners. And this is the result of Jesus coming into the house of a sinner. Verse 8, And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, this is the result of Jesus being in his house, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Get this, today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Let's just kind of close it up here. Just like Zacchaeus, Jesus must visit our house today. And, you know, he has no requirements for us uh, before he comes to visit. We don't have to fix things up. We don't have to clean things up. We don't have to attend to certain matters before we can let him in. Because the truth is, Jesus already knows who you are. He already knows us. He already knows the state of our house. Uh, and the truth is, he wants to be there anyway. You want to know why? Because his presence, his presence alone and his love for us will lead us to do things that we never thought we could. Even in admitting that when we were wrong and to make those things right, we can easily assume that you know, Zacchaeus lived a better, a different, uh, a fuller life uh, after his encounter with Jesus. And the truth is, we can have that same experience. See, the truth is, our meaning, our meaning for living is found in Christ. Both of these men sought after Jesus and received the answer that would not only change their lives forever, but it would change the lives of future Christians and like-minded seekers forever. Second Corinthians chapter 5 or 17 says this. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. 
Behold, the new has come. I want that to be my prayer. Let that be your prayer today, uh, that we would be more aware of the Spirit of God in our lives. You know how the song goes, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let that be your prayer today. Let's just pray. Lord, enable us, Lord, uh, enable us to believe in you wholeheartedly as our, as our Savior and our Lord. Renew us, O oh God, renew our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit and give us new strength to live victoriously every single day. We're so grateful for your call. Be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Crossroads family. Have a good one.